¿Qué pasa, campeones? And welcome to Churros y Tácticas podcast on Wednesday the 10th, two days late, but we're coming at you you know, regardless of what is going on in our personal lives, whether it's trips, whether it's COVID, it's still here, folks. It's still lurking and creeping in the corner, looking around, and um, we just got to get into it. Yeah, 15 minute condensed. So not a whole lot of time to roll the R's or for intros. We're here to talk about Chavi mainly. Um, at least that's the gist that I'm getting as Kian and I just, uh, yeah, popping the trunk and coming at you raw, dirty, as you'd expect from us. Uh, this is this. <laughs> this, is, this is an insane churros intro. This I know. Is, I, I am so ill prepared. We we never prep, but I actually it's the first time I feel ill prepared for this for this podcast. I know I'm supposed to be quick thinking right now and on like on the fly because we have like no time and this podcast is going to zoom by. But I, my brain literally froze when you said raw and dirty, and it just went. I don't, I don't know what happened to my mind, but it, it left me. It left my body for a second. All right. Focus, um, very condensed. We're here. A lot of personal reasons why we didn't record the last two days. We have 15 minutes to get this done. You don't know about this, but we have a couple patron questions that have to do with Chavi. So we're going to start with that, okay? All right. Our first patron question. Well, I, have a, I have a first question. I have a first question. Uh, okay. When are you going to get a mic back? And is this amateur show going to stop? Uh, so I got a note from Pure Later after touching down from Spain yesterday that my microphone has arrived. I have to go to Pure Later to pick it up tomorrow. And I'll have my microphone for our next Churros podcast. So it's going to get let's better. Let's go, baby. Yeah, let's go. Um, by the way, funny anecdote. Before we get to the questions, uh, because this podcast is not going to be about the football that played but was played this weekend. Sorry, Sevilla Darby. I don't, you know, I don't care how important you are. It's not going to happen. Um, sorry, Valencia 3, Atletico 3, one of the games of the season, not going to happen. Uh, but a special shout out to Barca 3, Celta 3, which was epic. And I just want to let you know that I was, the first half was, I, Celta were just terrible. And I almost didn't watch the second half, but Celta came back like a phoenix and that was fun to watch. And when it was 3-2, I was about to turn it off because I had to run outside uh, and, and I had to do some errands before the Real Madrid game that night. And then all of a sudden, because my feed was behind, I hear the streets of Madrid shouting, going crazy, goal, goal, goal. And I was like, what the fuck? So I came back to my laptop and Aspa scored. And that was one of the highlights of my trip. Not the Bernabeu experience, which was freezing. And that was fun. But, it, you know, the highlight was, was Aspa. So... So I had to my, my highlight was seeing you, and I didn't mention it on, on the picture, seeing you dressed in Blaugrana in the Bernabeu sitting there. <laughs> you were dressed in blue and red, my friend. That, that takes balls. That takes balls. I didn't, even, uh, I didn't even realize that was happening, but good observation. That's on my Instagram if you guys want to go see that. Um, our patron, Sebastian Hultuona, who gets a response to his question. Do you know why? Because he is the great patron of Churros y Tacticas. And only the great patrons get guaranteed responses to their questions. So patreon.com slash Churros y Tacticas, where you get a Friday episode for free if you pay. <laughs> uh, so if you're a patron, you get a Friday bonus episode and you get responses to your questions. Sebastian says, I truly fear that Barca will become a force with Xavi's arrival. Even now, they are only behind Sevilla on expected points and above Real Madrid by a small margin both around 22 points, but Real Madrid have overperformed by five points and Barca did the opposite. The only problem at Barca is the finishing, looking at the stats. You can say the defense is mediocre, but they still create a crazy amount of chances to outscore their opponent. So looking into this from a process-oriented viewpoint, does this make you guys believe Barca is likely to become better and Real Madrid to become worse as the season unwinds? You want me to jump on this? Yes. You go first and I'll, well, I'll come back. Of course. I think it's a, a very astute observation that, yes, indeed, the chances were being created, not being scored. And that's a that's a reality. That's a fact. And we always had a sense that I don't know why my screen is so dark. It just went. It went like it went black and now it doesn't it, matter. It we back don't have up time. It's very dark. Doesn't matter. Um, I think uh, that the chances created, uh, well, we always had a sense that once, you know, the ball started to 
would hit would start hitting the back of the net that it would open the floodgate so to speak and i get a sense that uh, with Xavi now in charge um barca is bound to get better and i think the goals the more chances will be inverted the goals are in the flame is of course a bit ubiquitous, but I, I do think we will have a higher conversion rate with you know, the injuries permitted. Obviously, we hope to see Ansu Fati back. We hope to see Dembele back and healthy. Both those guys, uh, there's talks of maybe Trincao being brought back in January because Xavi is quite eager to be coaching him. Uh, I do think that, yes, we will see more of an offensive threat come from this Barca side that will improve, um, you know, in due time, in, in sort of the mid say, long-term perspective. Um, but with Real Madrid getting worse as a consequence, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I you know, who am I to say? I, I, I think Madrid will continue to compete and also probably uh, be uh, on an improving, you know, curve and ascending uh, trend, let's say, and increasingly get better on under Angelotti. At least that's what you would expect uh, from a manager to just come in and... Um, <clears throat> will get to train with his, his players. So that's, in short, that's my, my take. I don't know if Madrid will get worse as a consequence of Barca becoming better, which, yes, I do uh, have faith that, that that will be the case. I don't know either, but I think that the argument that Real Madrid will get worse and Barcelona will get better has grounds to stand on. I think it's, a, it's actually a solid foundation for a theory or a prediction. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, Sebastian brought up the expected points. Um, just to dig deeper, I mean, expected points, you know, you know, I was calculated, basically, you look at the expected goals and expected goals against for every game and you, you put it all together. Right now, Real Madrid are outperforming their expected goals by an untold, like, unworldly, uh, otherworldly amount. And that is, uh, their expected goals is 21. They've scored 28 goals. So nearly seven goals altogether. It's 21.71. Um, they've outperformed. And that's partly because Vinicius is scoring really difficult chances, as is Benzema. Is that sustainable? I don't know. They've also um, they've also conceded 13 goals from an expected goals of 14. So and, and Barca have been underperforming every metric in that department. And their chance creation has generally never been a real problem. Uh, last year, when they weren't good, you know, they were creating more chances and they were more fun to watch than Real Madrid from an offensive standpoint. But they had Lionel Messi. And this season, they're still creating chances, but they're just not converting them. Their defense has been terrible, yes. But so, will that normalize? Math tells us that usually these things aren't sustainable over a course of the season. Like, by December, I feel like we have a better picture of, of what is sustainable and what is not. But I also can't sit here and say that Vinicius and Benzema will just be, won't, can, will stop being good for the rest of the season. And, and, that, and that's basically the reason why they're outperforming their respective goals. Um, is because of those two. So it's hard to say, but I, I think there is there is merit for that argument. Um, but Barca season starts now. So I think, you know, we also have to be realistic. You said December will have a better sense. I wouldn't, you know, that's that's ambitious. You're giving Xavi two weeks here <laughs> to uh, uh, that's implement true. his... Uh, okay, fine. We'll say, we'll, say, we'll say March then. I mean, just for the sake yeah, of this listen. season, just for the sake of the season. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. If we're yeah. talking about big picture, then maybe Chavi's, maybe, I mean, you said it last week that, you know, his first season is really next season. That You said that, not me. So I, I think, you know, yeah. if we're counting it that way. But for, for the sake of this season, I also want to talk about Trincao because you mentioned him. Um, mm. I, you know, whether, I think Chavi wants wingers, right? That's clear. Like, yeah, you know, I was going to exactly. ask you, and I don't know if we have that much time to dive into his press conference from Monday, but I think it's pretty clear that he wants wingers. Um, so yeah. more of people like Memphis and Ansu who can take players on. And in the past, you know, that was Neymar and Messi and all these guys. But um, so somebody like Trincao makes sense, especially if Dem Dembele is going to be not healthy. Uh, I also saw that you liked on Twitter the, the move from Collado. Um, the Barca winger. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him promoted, right? Um, you know, if you well, can't he's, he's in the first team. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, maybe more he, minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he hasn't played any minutes, of course, exactly. But um, I'd love to see Collado get some minutes under Xavi. I think uh, uh, Collado is a very mature player with a lot of talent that could definitely be used as a wing, as a, you know, wing option. Um 
So why not add him into the mix, especially knowing that you have a, a very injury prone uh, Dembele on that wing, on that right wing. So uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Collado, our patron Albert Alberto Collado Gray, he has a question as well. Uh, mm. He says Chavi is coming back, and the identity wars seem about to start all over again. It sounds like a Marvel thing. When do you think the next big playing style will come up? Football is evolving, becoming more professional through data and any chance of Moneyball. Have you seen Moneyball? Because I haven't. It's on my list. Yeah, yeah, with Brad Pitt. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. It's a, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Um, go ahead. Go take the question. I'm all right. Um, when do you think the next big playing style will come up? I'm not sure exactly what that means. If maybe Alberto means like when is the next big evolution or revolution? I feel like these things yeah. don't happen like at once. They're kind of gradual over time. We get desensitized to it. And like over the course of five years, we look up and we're like, holy shit, football has changed. There's more pressing than ever. Um, there's, you know, we have like more number 10s on the field and less strikers. And we have more use of wingbacks than ever. And it's kind of this thing that gradually happens over time. I find, I don't know if it's like one thing, bam, that changes, you know, obviously there's exceptions to this, like, you know, if we're looking at basketball, Golden State Warriors, all of a sudden it was like, bam, it changed. And we looked at Barca 2009, bam, that's one revolution, right? So, I, I, you know, it's hard to say, but I kind of interpreted this question a different way, which was when will we see, like, the identity wars and when this discussion will come up next. I feel like the, I don't think I mentioned this to you, but I feel like the very first Xavi game, which is what, Espanol, is that, that's the one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like in that game, and now this is kind of, I think Chavi, this is where I think the timing actually works out really well for him because he comes during the international break. I mean, yeah, he loses people who go on the international break, but at least he has some kind of time frame to work with here where he can talk to the talk to the players. He can, you know, have team meetings. He has a lot of time to build up to this. You know, he has time to cancel all of PK's meetings and all these to distract him. That? Yes. I, I, when I first saw like the report that, he wants to have PK travel less. I, I thought that that probably means maybe less like more, less like business trips, more sleep, more staying in Barcelona and less interviews. And turns out that that's probably what it is. And that's seems like what it is. He, he has already, he has already canceled an interview on, on public Spanish TV. Yeah. Good. He had a, a he had a guest appearance on a famous late night show and, and Xavi was like, mm, no, you don't, you don't have a meeting. How mad is that late night show now? They're like, damn it, Chavi. That was our ratings episode. <laughs> They're so mad. Uh, so he has time to implement ratings. this stuff before the Espanol game. So anyways, I my, I think that idea, the discussion of identity is going to come up right away. You remember when Setien's first game in charge when Barcelona had like 3 million percent possession and Busquets had almost 200 touches? I think the first game is going to be something like that. We're going to talk about that after the Espanol game and everyone's going to lose their shit now. And then, and, and, you know, things will normalize and, and then you'll start complaining in, in future games. But that Espanol game is, I think that's going to be when we're still going to have the discussion about identity. It's going to, it's going to happen right away. What do you think? Yeah, I, I hope to see instant uh, identifiable uh, <laughs> style of play for sure. Uh, I expect nothing less coming from Xavi. His press conference that you alluded to was filled with, with goodness, was filled with uh, creamy moments. And um, he just ticked all the boxes, man. And I can't wait. You know, it's going to be a while, obviously, before he has the entire team um, available, not just because of international duties, but of uh, the 14 players, uh, just to give you an idea, that were available for his first practice session. Only six actually were match or pitch or train pitch, let's call it, right? Uh, not a bitch fit, but a pitch fit. And... Um, it was it was Martin Braithwaite, Ricky Puig, uh, Neto, Iñaki Peña, two goalkeepers, uh, Mingueza, and uh, I'm blanking on one, but uh, oh, Luke de Jong. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and by the way, he's and, you know those his 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 career has <laughs> got to be done at Barca after Xavi's arrival. <laughs> he does not fit at all what Xavi wants to do. I cannot comment. I, I mean, comment. well, um, like just the fact that Xavi really wants wingers and Luke de Jong is not like a Luis Suarez who can do a bunch of things outside the box, you know? So, I mean, I'd be shocked. 
but we'll see. He, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like a Collado false nine over over Luke De Jong if there was like no one left to play. I I can tell you're very excited, as excited as me, as excited as Ole, which is a good good sign. Um, I feel like it's a yeah, win win for start. everyone. If he right. does well, yeah, it's good so for the league. Yeah, it and is. it pushes Real Madrid sure. to be better. And if he does bad, then Real Madrid fans can laugh. It's a win win. It's a win win. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna start whooping your fucking asses again. It's a win. It's a win. And another win. Keep your expectations in check, my friend. Um, I got. I got a jet. I can't believe it. I, go. I knew. I, I blinked, and the podcast was over. I had to go pick up my son. Yeah. Uh, Look, so that's I know. That. You gotta go pick up your yeah. son. It's it's madness over at the Lorraine's. I'm very sorry yeah. for our listeners. This was uh you know, you deserve better. Uh, this week is the way it was. Thing unexpected things come up. COVID is still around, uh lockdowns, con- confinements, madness and time schedules and, and, and work schedules. So family schedules and talk. Thank you for the nice so, messages on Twitter, by the way. A lot of people sent yes. support and said family first and take care of the kids. So right. thank you for that. Exactly. And this is why we love you guys. It's a family. It's not just a podcast. It's Mescoon podcast. It's it's a family. It's a, chur- it's a churros. <laughs> we it love is. you guys. All right. So, so see if you guys over on patreon.com slash churros y tacticas on Friday for a banger of an episode, I'm sure. And uh, do Spain, Spain must play be from now until Friday, right? Sure, I don't know. And Spain is great again because we have two. <laughs> we have Carvajal, yeah. we have Brahim, we Barca have. are in charge. We have, we have uh, uh, Luis Enrique as coach. We have uh, Raul de Tomas called up too. Very yes, happy about that. Uh, for good reason. Surprised yeah. Nico hasn't been called up. Anyway. Yeah, he sucks. All right. Thanks, Diego. Appreciate it. Appreciate your Bye time. Soon. Talk Friday. Take care. Peace. I heard that. Bye. <laughs> Peace.